Hello and welcome. Today I am doing a Forza Horizon 2 video to show you a bit of the background of how I got into drifting and where I am at today with tuning. That's roughly about it. But just tuning and how far I've come from being drifting in Forza Horizon 2 to drifting in Forza Motorsport 6 and in Forza Horizon 3. So today I am going to be doing two drift builds. The first one is the 1970s Plymouth Roadrunner Fast and Furious Edition. So uh, with that aside, let's get into the video. So why did I pick the Roadrunner? Well, one, it's a must call. Two, you don't see much in the game. So for that reason, that's why I picked it. And uh, that's roughly about all I have on that one. The last call is a surprise. It's the second one. Do real cage. Weight reduction. That should be about good. Oh yeah, you don't want it too light. You want it to have a decent amount of weight. Transmission depth. Oh, never mind. So we're running the stock transmission. Tires. Uh, well, sports. Uh, that's too much. So we're 275 on the front. On the reel, you can never have too much. So since we're pushing six hundred foot pounds of torque, um, I think three thirty five should be good. The rims, I'm gonna leave. Okay, this one you can't change them. So I'm not really doing a whole lot of power to it. I'll just do a uh, raise exhaust so that way it's 700 horsepower even and 627 foot pounds of torque. Well, we'll play around and take a look at the rest of them. So it is naturally aspirated. It's got a 449, I think it says. Yeah, 449. Six pack, possibly. We could have twin turbos, but uh, that should be plenty though. So that aside, let's go give it a run and then fine tune it as we need to. And of course it's raining. Out. So how did I get into drifting and why? Well, I like cores and I'm definitely a big fan of the most cores. Um, that's roughly the only thing I'll drift. Although on my channel you will see a very few videos of me drifting and imports. Oh, that nice downshift. So let's go in and tune it. I've always had cores. Um, racing is not really much of my scene. I'd rather go sideways. Uh, it's a lot of fun, especially if you can hone the skills in. It can be a lot of uh, payoff to see how far you've come. A little bit more on the angle. And why drift in Forza Horizon 2? Yes, it is arcade, KD. Um, sorry about that.
bit of a long pause. As I was trying to say, why did I start drifting on Forza Horizon 2, even though it is arcadey? Um, basically, it was a good place to start drifting, even though it's not actual real physics or sim based at all. But uh, it has a little bit. And uh, from there, I slowly started honing my skills on drifting. And eventually, I went from there to Forza Motorsport 6. Um, that was a little bit more of a different learning curve. That was actual real sim based. So, of course, tuning and all that came into bigger play than it did in Horizon 2. Um, I wish they would have brought uh, the Roadrunner over to Motorsport 6, or at least Forza Horizon 3 for that matter. But uh, it's always good to come back to the games that you started from, whether it's racing or drifting or drag racing. Um, just good to see where you've started from and how much you uh, practiced and how far it's come. But as I was saying though, um, Forza Horizon, oh no, sorry, Forza Horizon 6 was a big long for me. I had taken into text of everything that I did to the vehicle, from the handling to the upgrade to the tuning, uh, how much power do I want to put out, or put into the vehicle I mean, how much torque do I want, all of that played into factor of whether or not it's going to drift, well of course it would drift, but it all depends on the skill of the driver behind that particular vehicle, so instead of going for the imports that are relatively easy, I find it. I went straight to the Muscle Cores and uh, been enjoying it since. So the first one I tried drifting right out of the gate was of course the Chevelle El Camino SS 454 Big Block. Uh, that one is pushing I believe 400 maybe 500 horsepower stock of course and uh, as you progress with that vehicle or the skills get better with handling the vehicle you'll eventually get into the tu uh, upgrading and then tuning uh, that's where it also played into uh, effect was how well do I want it do I what kind of build am I going for I have fun more with the lower horsepower builds that I do um, the high horsepower is oh nice but uh, I don't find it as enjoyable as I do with the lower horsepower. I'm not too sure why. Like this one's not crazy amount of horsepower. Like yeah, it's in a 700 range, but it's not overly powerful. Not like pushing a thousand horsepower or 800 for that matter. Um, that's how I find this more enjoyable. It looks like this tune that I just quickly put on it seems to be doing pretty good. Um, again, when you do tuning, you want to adjust a little bit, play around with it, and if you need to go about it, do so in the manner that you need to. This is just one of the cores I'm going to be tuning in this video. But uh, yeah, this one tuned out pretty good very stable, it doesn't spin out, uh, it goes on its wheels all the time, drop it down a gear to get the RPMs up. So again I'm running 335s on the wheel, I'm running 275s on the front. Uh, the compound is probably sport, uh, I didn't go to race tires or off-road. But yeah, all in all, this car is enjoyable.
Oh yeah, and I also just made a replica of vinyl. It was just last night uh, from Pinterest. So give that a check out on my storefront on Forza Horizon 3. It is the Camel IROC Z. Uh, I think I did pretty good. But let me know what you think of it. But yeah, this vehicle is pretty much done. I uh, definitely love the natural sound of the V8. And why I chose to come back to Forza Horizon, oh, sorry, Forza Horizon 2 is you have the docks you can drift in. You have little sections you can drift, like I was a few minutes ago before the docks. Um, just little things like that that made uh, Horizon 2 enjoyable to play regardless of if it was racing or drifting of course. Um, how about I got into it is I watched the slop train. He's uh, I guess you can say for me he was a big uh, reason why I got into wanting to drift. Uh, I always saw it, watched his videos, uh, see how much fun he was having, drifting around. And uh, of course over the time of playing this, I also enjoyed drifting and uh, met some pretty cool people to drift with. Uh, some tunes I got lucky with, some tunes I had to still go back to the drawing board or still fine tune. Too much angle a bit, but um, yeah, this Roadrunner is definitely a beast. Here's another section that I actually enjoy as well. So this way and this way. This was another little mini section that I liked as well. And uh, <laughs> she's seen better days for sure, but uh, she's well driven. Tires are nice and warm. Definitely uh, one car you can enjoy driving all the time. Very consistent. You can't really do a whole lot to it. I guess if you really wanted to, you could. I guess the only thing I would tweak would be the gear ratio a bit. With the final drive to a bit more acceleration and possibly fourth gear. It did somewhat drop, but not by much. So with that one aside, well, I'm gonna show you the last vehicle that everyone should or might know from the Fast and the Furious as Dom Toretto's iconic 1970s Dodge Charger with that amazing blower. Love that sound when that thing winds of the Hemi. No, the supercharger, I mean. How did I put it? Is this the one or is this the one? Nope, this is the one. So, yeah. It's straight up S1 class. Um, 900 horsepower right off the hop. It's uh, a car that can get down at any time. Look at that engine shake. So nice. Definitely a car that I would love to have. Definitely my dream car to have in my garage. But uh, that happens, that's hard to say. But uh, yeah, it already has a roll cage, so that's good. Don't have to do too much on that. Just have to do the little minor adjustments. This one's fun because it's 900 horsepower and also 663 foot pounds of torque. So she can get down pretty good. So it'll take a little bit of weight, make it a little bit lighter, so it's 3,000. 20 pounds that makes a big difference don't need that uh, we'll go with race transmission and of course race differential in order to keep lock it a little bit not too much 
Uh, funny thing is, I was say funny, but odd thing is, is I used to put everything to 100 for service and deceleration. But once I played around a bit, I just did my own little thing. So I'm doing 265 on the front. Because it does got a lot more horsepower. I'll probably do... Probably 335s or 325s. I think I might do 325s. I'm um, keeping that stock rims again. Don't really need to be changing that at all by any chance. Definitely don't need that. Uh, you could uh, just drive, swap it to all-wheel drive. Gives you a better launch and all that if you want to drag race it. Which this is pretty much what it's meant for. It's... Um, let's just hear the engine. You can get sideways very easily. Nine hundred horsepower and long gear ratio. She's uh, ready to get down and get crazy with spinning them tires around. So even with three twenty fives, she's still able to uh, go sideways. And of course, I don't have to really do too much to it. This is uh, pretty good for being stock tuned. But yeah, if you wanted to keep up with others that have uh, more horsepower, the Charger would definitely be the one to grab, as you can see. Doing like 60 miles per hour. The fifth gear is sort of dying a bit. Ooh, there's the other one of Dom's Chargers. The off road version. Uh, more like, I think it's the Baja Charger. One of the two, but yeah, that's another nice one. And yeah, she's fast. Shows that mean stance. Student side view. Nope, oh, my bad. Of course, I'm not. Haven't driven a carpet too much for when it's drifting. Just kill the poor Mustang. You really want to see how much power this thing has. Second gear and spins tires. Look at a nice blow. So what I'm gonna do rolling is probably up the differential. You can leave that stock. The units are pretty much stock. It comes with, I believe. I believe that's a four gear or five gears right off of it. I'll go two like that, that way it keeps a bit balanced. You could play with that right height, which I will do. So if you really want to give it a bit of a rake, or have it the same, I'll do a bit of a rake on it. It looks a little bit more mean. Do my usual. This will allow it to uh, lock up a little bit more. Be able to spin them tires. But, yeah, but I already can. And yeah, it drops it pretty good. Uh, the other one that can shred a lot of tires is the Toyota Subaru. You can get up to like a thousand horsepower easily. 
fifth gear drift. Nice. Let's go. Uh, get that up a bit, but it won't. But that fifth gear drift was so sweet. You can get away with some of the vehicles doing that. Just goes to show how uh, much potential this charger has with 900 horsepower. Man, this thing's got some sweet speed. Ooh, that could have been bad. Putting on a little show. See if we can drive up this. Nice lines on the wheels. Long entry. Yeah, you can also drift these two. That monstrous V8 with a supercharger sounds so nice. It's music to my ears. They definitely need this in uh, Forza Monster 7. Oh, yeah. Line is nice. So why did I have the iconic Dodge Charger that Dom Toretto drove in the Fast and Furious movies? Well, it's on its own. It needs its own little bit of time of being in the spotlight. Um, they definitely made it a beast of a vehicle to drive. As you can tell, it just shreds tires like crazy. I think I'm tires monster. Um, why do I like this one so much? As I just ruined it. As you can see, there are no mirrors, not even in the middle or on the sides, so you can see what's around you. So it's pretty much a drag built uh, charger, but instead I use it for drifting. As you can see, there is a roll cage. It's got uh, the stock dials from the real one. It is, of course, a remake. A replica of the real thing. Love the wide steering wheel. And why did I paint it gray? Just to, uh, a way for me to tell it it's a different one that I don't have. Well, I have it, but, uh, because I have two of them, it's hard to tell them apart. Unless you uh, customize them differently with the paint. So that's why I did that. Same with the, uh, uh, the Plymouth Roadrunner. Same idea. Even though it may not seem like it. But uh, definitely enjoyable. Uh, it's good to go back to the roots of how far I've come from drifting to honing my skills and being able to tune my own vehicles 
not having to rely on other tunes from other people. Although it's not a bad thing, but uh, if you can tune your own vehicle, it definitely pays off. It's more rewarding to yourself as the uh, tuner of that vehicle. Everybody had a uh, different way of tuning. No tune will work for this for two other people. Uh, sometimes you might get lucky. But uh, yeah, just uh, going back to the roots of where I am now of drifting and the fact that I've been almost drifting in Forza for just about two years. But uh, definitely hope uh, you enjoy the video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you can, please show, spread the video around. It helps as well. Let me know that the viewers, aka Team Drift, uh, are appreciating the videos. But until then, drift on.